All right, today we're going to look at sequencing and um, James Fortin. An author of biographies especially will use sequencing of events to tell the story of a person's life. Sequence of events refers to the order in which events take place. This pattern of organization or text structure helps readers understand what happened in the person's life and when. They may, in, um, they may include dates to tell the person's age, show time order events, and how events are related. Um, a good example is the author of James Fortin says, was only seven when his father died. Words and phrases such as after and then also indicate time order. So in your books on 428 and 429, I'm going to reread um, so you guys can look at the sequencing, some of the words, phrases, um, and details the author uses to help with James Fortin's life. James Fortin was taken aboard the Amphion with others from his crew. On board the British ship, Captain Beasley inspected the prisoners. There were several boys among the American crew, and he separated them from the older men. Captain Beasley's son looked over the boys who had been captured. Many of them were younger than he was. Although still prisoners, the boys were given more freedom than the men, and Beasley's son saw the Americans playing marbles. He joined in the game, and it was during this playing that he befriended Fortin. The result of this tentative friendship was that Captain Beasley did not, as he might have done, send Fortin to the ship bound for the West Indies in slavery. Instead, he was treated as a regular prisoner of war and sent to the prison ship, the Jersey. Dark and forbidding, the Jersey was a 60-gunner anchored off Long Island in New York. It had been too old to use in the war and had been refitted first as a hospital ship, then as a ship for prisoners. The portholes had been sealed and 20-inch squares carved into her sides. Across these squares, iron bars were placed. The captain of the Jersey greeted the prisoners with a sneer. All were searched under the watchful eyes of British Marines. The wounded were unattended, the sick ignored. The pitiful cries of the other prisoners came from below decks. A few pale, sickly prisoners covered with sores were huddled around a water cask. Then came the cry that some would hear for months, others for years. Down, rebels down! They were rebels against the king to be despised, perhaps to be hanged. Traitors, they were being called, not soldiers of America. James was pushed into a line on deck. The line shuffled toward the water cask, where each man could fill a canteen with a pint of water. Then they were pushed roughly below decks. The hold of the ship was dark. What little light there was came from the small squares along the hall. The air was dank. Some of the prisoners were mourning, were mo moaning. Others manned pumps to remove the water from the bottom of the boat. Sleep was hard coming, and James wasn't sure if he wouldn't still be sold into slavery. Beasley's son had liked him, he remembered, and the boy had offered to persuade his father to take James to England. It would have been better than the hold of the jersey. In the morning, the first thing the crew did was to check to see how many prisoners had died during the night. Many of the prisoners were sick with yellow fever. For these, death would just be a matter of time. Fortin later claimed that the game of marbles with Beasley's son had saved him from a life of slavery in the West Indies. But on November 1st, two weeks after the capture of the Royal Lewis, the news reached New York that Brigadier General Charles Cornwallis had surrendered to George Washington. Washington had strongly posted, had strongly protested the British practice of sending prisoners to the West Indies. It was probable the news of his victory, more than the game of marbles, that saved the young sailor. Sequencing of events. How did James Fortin come to be on the ship with Captain Beasley's son? Just a reminder that sequencing of events in the order in which they occurred in a text helps the author with the text structure of what actually went on in a person's life. 
So I want you to kind of rethink. You might need to read a couple pages prior to these two also. Um, and I want you to answer in complete sentences um, using evidence from the text to help you. Um, try to think of sequencing words after, before, age, dates, things like that that would help you better understand the order in which events occurred.